After much furor on the issue of electoral bonds over the last month or so, well, a fresh row has cropped up. Prime Minister Modi has hit out at the opposition in a tell-all interview. He has highlighted that it is the electoral bonds that have helped identify the money trail and term the scheme a success story. Additionally, the Prime Minister has also emphasized that the BJP received donations amounting to 30% of the total amount, while the 63% of the donations went into the opposition's coffers. Meanwhile, Rahul Gandhi has mounted an attack at the centre, alleging that the electoral bond scheme is the biggest extortion racket. The Congress leader has claimed that the BJP has got thousands of crores of rupees by extorting businessmen. Well, we are merely two days away from the general elections commencing in the first phase and it does not seem like the war of words over the electoral bonds is going to quell or die down anytime soon. But we'll try and understand from people what they think about what the Prime Minister said. Dr. Dhrindar Tayal, BJP spokesperson with us on the broadcast. Mr. Ashpreet Singh Khadiyal, Congress spokesperson, <coughs> I beg your pardon, is with us on the show. Mr. Vineet Goenka, political analyst, joins us on the program as well. Last but not the least, Advocate Gyanendra Mishra, political analyst, with us on the program as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for being a part of this conversation. Ashpreet, I'll begin with you. Why do you think Rahul Gandhi believes that this is an extortion racket if 30%, 37% of the proceeds of these electoral bonds are going to the BJP and the rest of them are going to the opposition? Thank you very much for that question, Vineet. First and foremost, <laughs> the Bharatiya Janata Party is clearly trying to undermine the Honorable Supreme Court the order of the Supreme Court and by saying that it is a success story, uh, they are basically trying to undermine the Supreme Court and uh, uh, what's been said in the order that the electoral bonds were unconstitutional. Is the Bharati Janata Party basically trying to suggest that it is their word against the Honorable Supreme Court's word? Number two, there's a reason as to why uh, uh, 21 former judges Four of the Honorable Supreme Court and rest of the former uh, rest of the High Courts had to write a letter to the uh, Honorable Chief Justice of India. There's a reason as to why 600 lawyers back in the day had to write letters to the CGI. There's a reason as to why four judges uh, mm. of uh, the Honorable Supreme Court had to do a press conference. So, from here we can see that there, uh, there, there, the, the, the Bharatiya Janata Party does not have the regard and respect of the Honorable Supreme Court of the judges sitting in it. And by suggesting and by making these kind of remarks and statements that uh, electoral bonds was a success story, they are undermining the uh, 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 that. Uh, the guardian of the constitution. Number two, uh, Ashpeet, uh, I give I, you that. But uh, does that take away from the fact that uh, you know your party also received funds through this modus? Coming to that, number two, uh, I'll I'll tell you what the difference is now. One, we had asked for a national election fund wasn't given. Number two, the not just us, the principal opposition of the country, but also the Reserve Bank of India, the Election Commission of India said it's a retrograde step because of this money laundering happens and because of this foreign funding is being done to the parties. Number three, uh, other parties, unlike the Bhatia Janta Party, are not in the center. They do not have government. Therefore, ITD, CBI cannot be used. Now, there's this interesting trail, this interesting pattern. 84 companies beneath, 84. They, let's say, uh, today they are raided. After a couple of days or a couple of weeks, they would give donations cross and cross to the Bharatiya Janata Party. Maybe 84 coincidences. Then there are 24 companies, let's say today, that they have uh, made a donation. After some time, they would get projects, maybe 24 other coincidences. Then there are four companies that, let's say, get project today. After some days, after some time, they would give donations, maybe another four coincidences. So the Bharatiya Janata Party should tell one thing. Why did you want to delay the divulging of the information in the first place if there was nothing to hide? Because at first, the government-owned uh, the government owned bank, the State Bank of India, asked for 116 days, uh, wanted to divulge the information on the 30th of June, which was after the Lok Sabha tenure ended, uh, which is uh, scheduled to end on the 16th of June. So why not before number two? Uh, the Bharati Janata Party should tell us this, that why is the ITD CBI not active now? Why are you not getting any notices, any arrests are not being made, uh, 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 no summons are being issued? And the Bharati Janata Party has nothing to hide. On this very debate, they should say that we welcome an inquiry against us. We'll prove that we have nothing to hide. Okay. And okay, the Bharati Janata Party right, okay, should let's, let's, invite it. Okay, let's get a response. You, you've said a lot. Let's get a response from Mr. Goenka on this as well. Mr. Goenka, how do you respond to what uh, Ashpreet has said? 
is 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 this against uh, any kind uh, you know of uh, you know an observation or uh, the dictat that was issued by the supreme court that the prime minister mentioned the electoral bonds and supported it mr manohar ram ram to you ram ram to all my co panelists and all the viewers who are watching us today it's a special day ram ramy so uh, let me uh, request or bow in front of the almighty ram and pray for all of us now as far as the question goes in electoral bond i think yeah. in the post independence era this was the one of the best schemes which could fund elections in this country mm. as a layman who does not understand much of politics and neither am i a lawyer but i understand couple of things one the funds were paid through bank so it was legal money of the corporation which legally it was transferred to political party a party b party or c party that's it only element was there to safeguard the interests of the uh, donor the donor's name was not displayed was it a cash was it a black money answer is no it was some mostly now with the wisdom which uh, supreme court has it has struck down that it has asked for the data and we all respect supreme court even if supreme court judges are not appointed transparently we yet respect their decisions we don't have uh, right to question collegium we don't have right to question whether supreme court judges backgrounds can be checked and why only some limited people can be appointed why not a magistrate from some common court can become a supreme court judge that there is not a discussion point today so i don't have to diverge in that neither uh, i would like to Uh, asks what does the percentage of donation been given to Bharatiya Janata Party and the rest of the political party? And when uh, one of the political party does not have a good leader, useless leader, why was some money been given to you? Because in the UNI also, when we donate some money to some organisation, we see whether they are credible. Today I see Congress without a leadership, without a policy, without a face, without any program. Yet they have received so much of money. So what kickback did they get? for what they did get this eight money and do want to say that the people will donate money to congress just because they have this kind of face who does not know what is india i am doubtful so i i understand there were state governments in the state governments were at various places whether it was in chatisgarh or rajasthan so they have to answer that and when they blame somebody else of you know sharing projects having some policy uh, features they may be probably uh, citing their own example but yes i know one thing that uh, cbi was called as cage parrot in the time of congress not in the times uh, when narendra modi is with nobody passed this kind of strictures against cbi uh, i also know one more thing that congress never respected the constitution so they should not ask this particular question to any other political party let me give you one more example uh, in emergency congress undermined the courts also they undermined the, all the institutions so those people who killed democracy in this country mm. those people who did not respect court those people who tamed uh, organizations like cbi and other organizations today when they are suffering crisis leadership crisis they are suffering face crisis they are suffering policy crisis mm. they are trying to you know deflect that by asking questions on the funds mm. so my request to them they will be concentrate on your weaknesses improve okay. your leadership improve your leadership skills mm. and go to the voter for asking good Vote. voters are not fool Okay, all right, Mr. Vishwas Pathak, where do you stand on this? The Prime Minister spoke about the electoral bonds. He also spoke about central agencies, which is a continuous charge on the incumbent government that are being misused to target and uh, vilify the opposition. You know, he took that question head on, and he also said that less than three percent of the cases with the ED relate to uh, you know political affiliations. All right, Dr. Tyal, that's for you. Dr. Tyal, if you can hear me. Yeah, I can. No, I can't. So I, th I thought you were asking somebody, Mr. Pathak. I, I was wondering. I beg your pardon, sir. Okay. So no, 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 no issues. I, 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 I thought maybe there was another panelist, and uh, so I, I did too, uh, sir. I, I, I apologize for that. No, no issues at all. So. Uh, first things first. I mean, where uh, Ashpreet has come from to begin with, that probably the BJP does not have respect for the Supreme Court, or is saying something against the Supreme Court. The Honorable Prime Minister has clarified what was on his mind when he introduced the scheme, and it was all good intent. And he has gone to the extent of saying that it was a start that we made; it was not the end. And as schemes come. they always get tweaked and they develop but the fact is and he has said this he has even said that the 
people were funding the political parties and he has said not just the others i'm saying for my own party also now take the case i mean today congress is trying or very very hard but it's one mp one mp comes up with 350 crores in cash at his house that is dheeraj sahu for you now that is the way they are funding their elections so which is what the prime minister wanted to talk that the funding of the elections has to happen but it should happen in a legal in a with white money in a legal manner in a transparent manner at the same time the situation should not be such that the corporates who are contributing they get victimized by the party which comes into power that okay you gave more money to so and so party but we have come into power so they get victimized that should not happen that is a uh, point number one so there is no disrespect for the supreme court but uh, i mean that is something we are bogey which is being created which is the uh, something that congress does obviously does very very well uh, he's also called himself the principal opposition but let's understand the parliament today does not have a leader of opposition because nobody has nobody hit the 10% mark so even that basic mark of 10% with a single party which would have entitled them to have a leader of opposition we don't have one today so they're not the the other thing which he said is that you know we received the money which is all very clean because we were not in power in the center but the indian alliance partners were in power in so many states let let us face it the number one contributor the future gaming who has he contributed to he's contributed to dmk and tmc they are the ones who have received the most money from future gaming so to say that we did not have power let us not try to hide behind something you know there are skeletons in their cupboards the other thing i'm replying point by point the other thing he said that is why was the sbi not doing that i'm not applying for sbi but the sbi had come forward and said that for us to tally these and give it will take time the moment the supreme court said i don't want you to match them just release the data as available they released it so what really i mean why is there so much desperation in them the prime minister has come out and spoken and then he also said let us understand now in the corporate world and your uh, your viewers must know this in the corporate world most corporates would do this that to be fair to all the political parties what we will do we will assign a certain sum of money which per mp we will give to the political party so to, it cannot be said that we were favoring one party over the other now that is where the whole game gets skewed because bjp gets some 6000 crores with 303 mps which is about 20 crores to an mp congress gets 27 crores to an mp why what is so magical about the congress that they got 27 crores to an mp were they arm twisting these people in the states what was going on I mean, or oh, it has already been said that there is nothing there is no leadership there is no plan there is no agenda and still they get 27 crores tmc their own partner gets an astounding 74 crores per mp why 74 crores per mp aam mm. aadmi party another of their colleagues gets 130 crores an mp Let's understand what's going on here. I mean, the pot calling the kettle black. That is what is happening. Corruption is all over the place and has, and has been said on the 9th of May 2013, since he was quoting the court, it was on 9th of May 2013 that Justice Loda in the Colgate scam okay. had said CBI is a caged parrot. So that was the Congress which was caging these parrots, CBI and everybody else. Let's also, let's, let's also get a response from Advocate Mishra on this. Advocate Mishra, I suppose, as per, uh, you know, figures which are uh, easily available on the internet, the Congress was a big beneficiary of these electoral bonds as well. As to the page that's open in front of me, I could be wrong. Congress received as much as 1,400 crore rupees uh, from a number of donors through these bonds. The point that everybody perhaps wants, you know, to be answered is that when, you know, the scheme was launched, why wasn't there critique against it then? And, you know, if there was something morally incorrect that the Congress thought with these electoral bonds, why did they receive money through this? And what's the harm in the Prime Minister saying, OK, there is a scheme that, uh, you know, it did work to some extent. Perhaps some loopholes need to be figured out. So, uh, Vineet, I believe that what minister, 
what Prime Minister was telling was uh, self-contradictory, and that's the basically the point where he makes a point that it was a very transparent scheme, which was a laughable comment to make because the government and the SBI try its level best to not disclose any information unless the Supreme Court arm twisted the SBI to the extent when it was forced to disclose the information within 24 hours, which the SBI was telling will take at least six months. So the point here is of intention and telling a very distorted fact in an interview. Second, the prime minister is again self-contradictory when he is telling that there, there should be no tweaks in the scheme where he speaks that the you know, uh, the basically the cancellation of electoral bond schemes will bring in the black money once again in the system, which is a very unfortunate uh, statement because it questions the very wisdom of the Supreme Court when the Supreme Court says that what is basically erroneous in this scheme is the complete opaqueness of this scheme and the Supreme Court said that the people of this country, citizen of this country, are constitutionally entitled to know that which party has got what kind of money from which corporate house. And that is the fundamental right of the citizen of India to know it. So these, so, so never the Supreme Court said that you don't bring this scheme. The scheme in itself was something, you know, unconstitutional or bad. But the, only the aspect of making it a complete opaque and hiding the identity on a but very... Mr. But Mr. Advocate crowd. Mishra, but Advocate Mishra, there are democratic processes to find out who the donor was, who the recipient was, you know, the the the, 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 B, the BJP did not try to arm twist that in any which ways. You know, it's 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 pre pretty much obvious but, that they so knew that the, these systems could be used to figure out who gave how much to whom, right? Vinny, Vinny, that's the second part of the question: whether BJP arm twisted the you know the uh, the interested parties to make donation that's another part of it and i'll come to it but i was only questioning right now so that's the very that's the very argument that the supreme court negated when and my, another panelist was also making that point that why it was made opaque was that the power in b when they come to the power will know that who made the donation to the previous government and they were victimized. The Supreme, this very argument was made before the Supreme Court and Supreme Court negated this argument because the Supreme Court said that this information is... Advocate Mishra, you're a lawyer, I am not, sir, but, but Ashpreet, if I remember, the Supreme Court, uh, you know, wanted this disclosure because, you know, RTI and, 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 and some of its facets uh, you know, were being eclipsed, were being impeded, and that is the reason why this disclosure was deemed necessary by the Supreme Court. Ashpreet. Hey, no one second, one second. Let, let's that's get a response from Ashpreet, sir. Let me get a response from Ashpreet. He's, he's on your side only. Yeah. Go on, Ashpreet. Thank, thank you. So, first and foremost, if, uh, like the Bharti Janta Party government has been saying, we are all about transparency, the electoral bonds were all about transparency, then why do you have a problem with divulging the information of the donors? If you are all about transparency, so for once the Bhatti Janata Party would stop contradicting themselves. Number two, uh, talking of uh, the past, I told you that the Congress Party since day one has been saying that this mode is corrupt. And not just the Congress Party, but the biggest institutions, the most important of institutions we have in India have been asserting the same. The RBI, the Election Commission of India and the others. Third is that uh, the Bharti Janata Party till now and its spokespersons included are saying what? That it's a success story, that it is impeccable, that it's a great scheme. I mean, on one hand, the Supreme Court is saying it's unconstitutional and you going out there and saying that it's impeccable, that it's success story. So, therefore, what the Bharti Janata Party is trying to say, that uh, 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 it is unconstitutional, but nevertheless, it's a, a success story. So, they are basically questioning the Honorable Supreme Court, which is unfortunate, and we condemn it. Second, 
uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party's government should, uh, they, they did not answer one, this question that our leaders have been raising and that I have been raising in this debate as well, that if there's nothing wrong that has been done, if there has been no quid pro quo, there has been no misusage of the agencies in order to extort money, and you say that, there was nothing of this sort has happened, then just welcome an inquiry. And then it would be proved if you had nothing to do with it and that these were hundreds of coincidences that took place, nothing more than that. Next is that the Bharatiya Janata Party has a modus operandi. We've all seen how uh, India Alliance and the uh, country's opposition parties have been targeted. Now, when we talk of uh, the electoral bonds and the usage of agencies in it, we can uh, see patterns and history of the Bharatiya Janata Party back in the day uh, what have they done? They have left no opposition party in India that has not been targeted by the ED, ITC, For example, Mamta Banerjee's nephew, Sheikh Banerjee, MK Stalin, Shal Pravat, Chalanjit Chanmi, Arvind Kejriwal and whatnot. And all these actions, most of them have been initiated before either assembly elections or Lok Sabha elections. Second, uh, latest example is one chief minister down Mr. Iman Swarain, second chief minister down Mr. Kejriwal, third principal opposition party accounts were frozen. Another misusage example, former chief minister's daughters being targeted and whatnot. And none of them happen to be convicts. Whereas Bhati Janta Party's former president, Bangaru Lakshman, is a convict who has been convicted of corruption, mind you. Second, their lone Mizoram MLA has been convicted of corruption, uh, uh, who was then MLA. Then the Bharati Janata Party's government should come forward and they should explain the fact as to how are there these many, uh, you know, coincidences. I mean, uh, uh, I could name every single one of those companies. And uh, in, 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 in fact, three weeks, two weeks, a raid happens today, two weeks after, three weeks after, four week, uh, weeks after. Cross of money, cross of money is being donated. So the Bharatiya Janata Party should also one, uh, uh, since they have had taken a lot of stands, they should tell this as well. Has the Bharatiya Janata Party received or not money from beef exporting companies? The Bharatiya Janata Party will please clarify that. Okay, let Mr. Goenka respond to what you've just said. Uh, quite an allegation there. Mr. Goenka, how do you respond? No, no, no. What do you expect from a party which is of dynast and which has proved uh, times over decades and decades insulting the institution of court. Let me give you one by one example. 1975, Indraji, you know, undermined the court. She overruled the judgment. Uh, she implemented emergency, took away fundamental rights of everybody. She put behind everybody in the uh, jail. Uh, thousands of people, lakhs of people were suffering in those era. So she insulted not only court, but all the institution there. And then her son, again, a dynast who did not become prime minister on marriage, but became prime minister because she was assassinated. Uh, and what he did when, you know, Sup Honorable Supreme Court gave judgment and some relief to Sahabano, my sister from Muslim community, who overturned the judgment by uh, ordinance, you know, uh, insult, insult, institutalized by his government. And that too by a person who did not get appointed by merits, but by he got appointed because purely because his mother was assassinated. Then what do you expect from Rahul Gandhi, the uh, further Jainist? who insults the court by not attending the court in the case where he had insulted the Modi uh, community. He says that I will lower judiciary. Mein nahi so I never understood what is the word called as lower judiciary. I thought judiciary is judiciary. It does not have lower or upper kind. But anyway, if today they feel that this by saying so, that you know, so and so is insulting Supreme Court. So let me remind the uh, learned Ashpit Ji that Ashpit Ji, as an individual, I am aware that when I speak, I make also a call for a content of the Supreme Court. But I do have a right as Indian to ask certain things, even if Supreme Court is hurt. He oh. Sir, why are you not transparent about your appointments? Two, how is this system opaque? The companies which have paid have done it on their income tax accounts. They, they were, ROC was aware of that the money was dis, uh, donated. The income tax was aware of this. SBI had taken money from bank. It was going through. So money is not black. And they have not given a solution. And third, when they passed this judgment, there was a discussion uh, that, you know, will there be this kind of, you know, notion that Congress benefited or any other party benefited. I feel people of this understand that Congress has taken money, whether it was Bofors, whether it was Augusta, Westland. Now, they would like to equate somebody desperately. When they wanted to desperately equate, then they're trying to say, hey, look at this guy who is so-called transparent. He is transparent, but we will try to create some kind of narration. Well, oh. Ashpiti, you are very learned. You are far more educated than me. You can, but you should have to respect my understanding of this quality and that current dynast Congress 
will not be able to label anything on Modi ji. He is clean, he has proved himself and the last 10 years have been the best for this country and the next 10 years will be good under his leadership. Okay, Period. all right. And, and Dr. Tayal, the other, you know, conflicting aspect has also been that, you know, had the Prime Minister not said anything about it, it would have been a problem. Now that he has said something about it, it's also become a problem. I think Ashpish sir is mute. Dr. Tayal, that, that's for Dr. Tayal. Yeah. So you see uh, how everything is being distorted. For example, I don't know, maybe Ashpiji did not get enough time to read what uh, or listen to what uh, the Prime Minister had said. And he repeatedly said that, you know, uh, BJP is saying this is a success story and it is impeccable. Nowhere did the Prime Minister say it is impeccable. He said this was an on a scheme with every honest intention to prevent black money getting into the electoral system. Everything that comes in needs to be tweaked and developed over time. So it would have happened. It, it may have had its glitches. So time and again to uh, try to pull wool over the uh, eyes of the viewers that BJP is saying it's an impeccable scheme. The Prime Minister himself has said it was not impeccable. That is number one. Number two, he said the moment the money was donated, after that, why are you not hearing of any raids? I think he missed it, that just on the 2nd of April, uh, Future Gaming was raided and some 400 crores or so, uh, uh, some yeah, 409 crores of their assets have been attached. So things are on the way they were. So nothing has changed there. The other thing he said is, why was the government or not agreeing to divulge. I mean, come on, he's a, he's a lawyer. He has to know that it was not for the government to divulge. It was for the State Bank of India to divulge. So where does the government come into this? The SBI was to divulge. SBI said, these are my problems. If you, the Supreme Court said, okay, you leave this part out, you uh, divulge the rest, they divulge the rest. So right. to say, well, why was the government not divulging? That is another thing. The other thing which he said that right from the beginning we were saying this mode is bad, this mode is corrupt. And yet we went ahead and accepted the money. Yeah. Why? Because to be corrupt was their birthright. Because, you know, Rajiv Gandhi once said, we provide a very honest administration. I okay. so right. We've so run out of time, sir. Can't accommodate uh, any more comments. I apologize. We have completely run out of time. We're For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.